Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah and as promised from last week I have another quick and simple vegetable dish for you. Um, this recipe is one that I like to make as a quick side dish um, like the zucchini um, but this one's even faster because it only has four ingredients. Um, so uh, this is a recipe for spicy cabbage. Um, you could substitute any other uh, leafy green that you like. I typically make it with cabbage, but um, tonight I'm actually going to try it with uh, a mixture of collard greens and kale because that's what I have on hand. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. I'll, I'll give you an update in the comments on this video um, down below or in the blog post and let you know uh, how that went with the, with the different greens. Um, so I like to eat greens and I do like the flavor, but um, they can be kind of one-dimensional. A lot of greens are just sort of mineral tasting and bitter and don't have a lot of dimension to them. And hot spice is something that can really perk up almost any dish. Um, I'm not a put hot spice or you know hot sauce on everything kind of person. Um, that's more Rick's department. <laughs> but um, I do like a nice uh, spicy side dish, especially with something that's just like a single vegetable dish. Um, so for this recipe, and as always you can find the link to the full version of the recipe um, with quantities, and that link is down below this video. Um, but for this one you'll need cabbage or other leafy greens. You'll need some onions, some hot chili oil, um, and some salt, or you could use a soy sauce or tamari sauce. Um, you're going to start by sauteing the onions, chopped onions, um, in a pan, and you'll need a fairly large pan with a lid. I use a, um, a cast iron pan that's sort of like a big soup tureen shape. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. It's almost like one of those half wok pans, um, but that holds a lot of uh, vegetable matter and allows you to kind of squish the greens down in and, and pile them in there and cook a lot of them at, at one time. Um, when cooking greens, they reduce greatly um, in volume as you cook them. So you wanna cook more than you think you need because you know, if you just cook a small amount, then you basically get two bites per person or something. Um, so, so a dish that can hold a large volume and accommodate that while they're raw and then allow them to cook down is important. Um, so once the onions are about halfway cooked, I like to add the chopped greens at that point um, and put the lid on my pot for a little bit, allow the steam to build up and kind of soften those greens and let them wilt. And then um, take the lid off and turn the heat up slightly to evaporate off that liquid. Um, the greens will also give off quite a bit of moisture and I don't like soupy kale or soupy cabbage. Um, so I like to let that uh, moisture evaporate. Um, a few minutes before serving, when you think the, the greens are cooked through, you can turn off the heat, uh, sprinkle salt and toss well and then add your hot chili oil. Um, now one of the things that I like about hot chili oil is that it is flavorful besides the hot. It kind of has a nutty taste, I think. And the other thing that I like about it is it does impart the heat without imparting a sourness. Um, most hot sauces are made with vinegar and I don't necessarily want to add a sour flavor in addition to the heat all the time. Sometimes I just want heat. And so that's why I like to add hot chili oil, either as a condiment or in this case as a main part of this dish, um, because it gives it an earthy heat um, and I think accentuates the greens without making everything too sour. Um, of course, that's up to you. You could use you know, a, a traditional hot sauce, you could use a Thai hot sauce, um, anything that you like, uh, instead of the hot chili oil if that's your preference. But for me, the hot chili oil is the way to go. Um, and a little does go a long way. I usually start with about a teaspoon for a big, um, you know, big dish of cabbage or greens. Um, but you can taste it and then add a little bit more um, as 
as you as you like. Or you could serve, you know, put the bottle on the table and let people um, continue to spice their dishes as they prefer. I hope you'll try this one out. Like I said, it's a quick and easy dish, um, especially if you are a CSA box subscriber or you've planted a large garden and you have, um, you know, more vegetables than you can deal with. Um, this one also, also adapts well to other kinds of crunchy greens. So anything from peppers to a uh, celeriac or, you know, any of those kind of vegetables where you look in your in your box of the week and kind of go, what do I do with this? Just chop it up, saute it with some onions, throw some hot chili oil on there, Bob's your uncle. Um, let us know if you uh, make this recipe. I'd love to hear, hear from you. And tune in next week. Um, just this past weekend, we had our first natural dye workshop on the farm and it went really well. And I have, um, I wanna share one of my favorite natural dyeing tips with you next week. So tune in next week for that if you're interested in fiber arts topics. Otherwise, stay tuned. We'll have more brewing recipes and interviews for you as always. Thanks a lot.